place. They have like 15 minutes per person, even if they work very long hours. And that just puts them in a place with limited capacity to really help people in a deep way and really establish relationships with them in a deep way. Hey everyone, welcome to the Nourished and Thriving Show. I'm your host, Katie Lovett. I'm a registered dietitian on a mission to help you increase your impact and legacy on the world while healing your gut and reducing your IBS symptoms. I'm so grateful to have you here. Each week, I'll inspire you to live vibrantly and provide valuable resources and information that empowers you to take bold action towards your health goals. Before we dive in, make sure you follow or subscribe to my show wherever you're listening so you never miss an episode. Ready? Let's go. All right, guys, I actually got this question from an Instagram follower and I was like, that's a great question. And I should have a podcast episode to be able to send you to answer this question. And I don't. So this Instagram follower actually inspired this episode. So thank you. You know who you are. But the question was, what is the difference between you as in me, a functional medicine, gut health dietitian, and a traditional medicine person like a GI doc? It's such a great question. And I think I dance around this question in a lot of my content and a lot of my other podcast episodes, but I really wanted to just like dig in and just answer it straight up. So I hope that this is helpful for you guys. So I'm both, first of all, I am traditionally trained. I am a registered dietitian. I went to college. My undergrad is a bachelor of science in nutritional sciences. I did an internship at a hospital. I passed a board exam, the whole thing. So I'm very like legit, legit, like traditionally trained. But then I wasn't satisfied with traditional medicine. And we'll talk a little bit about why that is here in a minute, but I just wanted more. And so my answer to that was functional medicine training. So I got an advanced credential in integrative and functional nutrition. So functional medicine, it's sometimes called like integrative medicine, functional medicine, holistic medicine was kind of like one of the original terms, but I think that's in its own category. Now I'll go ahead and talk about it too, just to like clear the air. So everyone is like on the same page, but so traditional medicine is like your normal doctor, right? Like your normal doctor's office visit, doctor, nurse practitioner, all of that traditionally trained and they are typically, it, so the difference is what, what people are looking for and how they respond to what they find. So the difference is what people are looking for and how they respond to what they find. So traditional medicine is going to be looking for a disease to diagnose, okay? Then they are going to treat the symptoms and manage that disease. So if somebody has a bacterial infection or something like that, like strep throat, that's great, you know, because that is a short-term infection. You treat that disease. It's very easy to diagnose. You take a strep test, you do an antibiotic, it kills that infection and you go on your merry way. Um, Maybe with some side effects from the antibiotics, but that's a different conversation. I should do a podcast on that too. So that's traditional medicine. It's great in some instances, like, I mean, I have a pacemaker. It's maddening that I don't know why I need a pacemaker, why my heart, so my heart stops randomly, not very great to happen. I don't know why, and no one can answer that for me. I have a feeling it has something to do with some emotions and psychological stress. It started happening right after my sister passed away. But while we don't fully understand that, we have conventional or traditional medicine that was able to put a pacemaker in me. And I've had it for 10 years. I'm very healthy. I'm still alive. I've had three babies since then. So it's, it's wonderful. The, the leaps and bounds and understanding of the body and what we can do to help people live longer 
is great with traditional medicine. Functional medicine, though, doesn't just look for a disease to diagnose. It looks for function or dysfunction in the body. So say you have a functional medicine practitioner and they're doing similar testing as traditional practitioner. Maybe they would get the same results, but they don't just stop at responding to that test result or to that disease. They'll probably, they'll treat it, you know, in the short term if they need to, but then they ask the question why and how. So, but why is this going on? How did this happen? What is it telling us about the body? Because we view in functional medicine, integrative and functional medicine, symptoms are signs. There are way body's way of communicating with us that something needs attention, that something is off or imbalanced. And so with integrative and functional medicine, we really take it a step further. Yeah, we want to know what's going on, but we want to know why. And I think with traditional medicine, like I just think that it's a huge missing piece because it's doing a really big disservice to people to just treat them and send them on their way. And I think because there's just a lot of things like that have led to this, you know, and I think it's, you know, science takes 20 years or things are discovered in research before they're actually happening in practice with doctors. And so it takes a long time for things to get integrated. Whenever medicine first started out, all we really knew about were like contagious communicable diseases. And we were trying to save people's lives quickly with acute or short-term problems. And it's great at that. I think where traditional medicine kind of leaves something to be desired is with these more chronic conditions that are more ongoing. They need to be managed over time. And so then you're looking at long-term medication and the side effects and symptoms that come about from that, because we know another difference in functional and integrative medicine is our bodies are systems of systems. So With traditional medicine, you have all of these specialties, right? You have an endocrinologist, you have a GI doc, you have um, your PCP, your primary care, you have a neurologist, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, like everyone's in their own niche and they're looking very narrowly at each of their specialties, but they're not necessarily considering the body as a whole. And with integrative and functional medicine, it's a much more systems biology approach. And that's why I love gut health and why I focus on that is because we know that our bodies are systems of systems and the gut impacts all of them. So by going after the gut and creating balance in the gut where maybe there wasn't balance before, you're also going to see some non-gut symptoms resolve a lot of the time that was being impacted negatively by the guts, you know, dysfunction, the gut not working right. That you know, you maybe didn't even realize whenever you first started out. So I think that's a really great way of of breaking it down is traditional medicine is looking more for a disease to diagnose and integrative and functional is looking more for dysfunction or function and asking why and how and, and making decisions of what to do from there. So as you can imagine, the the pathways that you're going to go down for each of those approaches is going to be really different because if you're just looking for a disease to diagnose, it's very reductionary. So for somebody who's not a scientist, that's going to mean it is, it's going to be, you know, looking at what is most likely happening and testing for that. That's it's like a, almost playing a, like whack-a-mole, right? Like, and then whenever you whack the mole, game over. Like we got a positive result. This is what it is. And that's the end of the hunt. That's the end of the search. That's the end of looking because you found something to blame basically for these symptoms. And then you treat that, but you can see how that's looking at things through certain lenses or in a box versus functional medicine. It's going to cast a wider net. So a really great example of this is a client I'm working with right now who's been feeling really poorly for a while and her GI doc did a workup of tests on her and she was negative for everything. Went to an allergist, negative for everything. So we do our functional testing. And so the GI doc was testing for like five pathogens, which are bad bugs, like the most common five bad things, really general tests. They were all negative. 
my test is a much wider net. So it's testing for a lot of different digestive markers. It's testing for uh, nine different inflammation markers versus just maybe one that you would get from a traditional doctor. You're looking at your entire microbiome and then correlating it to the research and understanding what's going on. So do we have an imbalance? Which bugs are overgrowing? What does that mean? Like we're looking at the whole uh, you know, picture there. And then as far as pathogens go, it's testing for like 40 plus different pathogens, it's testing for everything that it can possibly test for to get a really big picture. So not only are you, yeah, looking for pathogens, you're also looking at, okay, well, and how has that impacted the inflammation markers? Like, is, is this, if it's positive for a pathogen, if there's bad bugs in here that are making this person sick, has it caused inflammation in the tissue? We're not just testing for one marker, we're testing for nine, you know? So we can really get a really good picture of what kind of inflammation, what are the drivers of that inflammation? What about the microbiome? Has, you know, have certain things overgrown that are causing some of these symptoms or is everything really balanced? Is she not digesting her food really well? And that could be contributing to things too. So we need to work on chewing and, and, you know, making sure that we're doing, you know, a lot of relaxing at meals and stuff like that. And so what we found out on this client's test was she tested positive for one of the bugs that the GI doc tested and found negative. And the reason is there's like five different strains of this organism. GI doc just tests for one, just for the most common strain. And I tested for all of them and we found it. We found then one that was significantly present and it could be linked back to a food poisoning incident where, you know, it's kind of close to when she started not feeling great. So it really lines up with her symptoms and all of that. So now we have a really clear path forward of not only how to go in and get rid of that bad bug, but also how to re-nourish her entire GI tract so that it functions properly to digest and break down her food, to allow nutrients to be absorbed into the rest of her body. And then those nutrients to be used for all of your cellular processes, every single thing that you do in your body, every breath you take, every time you blink, every time you, you know, toss your hair over your shoulders, every step you take, like tons and tons and tons of nutrients are required for every single function in your body. And so if your GI tract's not working right, those, those cellular functions can really be damaged. And that's where you start to see some of those non-gut symptoms showing up. So I hope that that makes sense. And that I was able to break all of that down for you guys. If you have more questions about like, what is integrative and functional medicine, nutrition, how is it different? definitely let me know. Keep these questions coming. I love them. I love answering my Instagram friends questions on my podcast because I know it's providing you guys with information that you really care about. And I really care about that. So we're going to talk about what holistic medicine is and where that fits into the mix. And then we're also going to talk about kind of the integrative and functional medicine journey and how that differs from traditional medicine. But before we do that, if you've been around for a while, or maybe if you're brand new and you enjoy this podcast, it really helps you. I would be so grateful if you would pause this episode right now, go give me a five-star rating. If you're on Apple podcasts, leave a little blurb with a review sharing with you know everyone why you love my show. It just helps me reach more people and get my expertise out into the world even more. And I really appreciate you doing that. So pause, come back. Thank you guys so much. Okay. So for holistic medicine, so whenever integrative and functional medicine was kind of just being born, holistic was kind of like the bucket word that it was all integrated into. And I think holistic medicine implies that you're looking at the whole body, but I think that there's also some different techniques and approaches with holistic that are not necessarily there in integrative and functional medicine. So holistic medicine is also going to include more like body, mind, spirit things. So like meditation, yoga, tai chi, acupuncture, stuff like that. And then you can even get into what I call, you know, some of the fringe therapies and treatments. Now, there's some clinical evidence. So like case studies, people saying that things really help them 
There's not necessarily a lot of science behind them, though, showing how they work or why they help people. So those are going to be things like food detoxes or biofeedback testing, things like that, that, you know, people might say that they feel a benefit from, but there's not necessarily like research papers showing like the mechanism behind it or the percentage to expect or anything like that. So that's going to be more like the holistic camp. And I think definitely integrative and functional practitioners, um, they tend to also be uh, traditionally trained like me, right? So a lot of them are medical doctors, MDs, nurse practitioners, dietitians, stuff like that, that have then gone into this more functional space. Holistic providers, not necessarily. They are more like holistically trained from the get-go, but I feel like integrative and functional practitioners are more open to this holistic side that's, you know, maybe a little bit less science-based than like a traditional doctor, if that makes sense. And then what does it look like? Like, how does it play out in the client experience? So I mentioned a minute ago that you know, our medical system, like I laugh, I shouldn't laugh. It's, it's so messed up in so many ways. You know, it started out, like I was saying with like acute illness, really good at that. But, you know, we have like, you know, pharmacy companies, you know, making money, you know, I'm not anti-capitalist or anything like that, but you know, they're out for money and they have a lot of resources and assets and, then you have doctors who are having to see 30 to 40 patients every single day. So they have like 15 minutes per person, even if they work very long hours. And that just puts them in a place with limited capacity to really help people in a deep way and really establish relationships with them in a deep way. And like, I would never talk bad about a doctor. Like I think doctors really deeply care for their patients and want to help people. That's why any healthcare provider goes into this space. I'm just saying that traditional medicine providers are not set up to have a deep relationship with their patients. That goes the same for dietitians too. If I were a clinical dietitian in a hospital, when I was doing my internship, I was seeing 40 patients a day in the hospital. So it's, it's the same. And with insurance billing and stuff, that's just the way it is. So It's hard, you know, imagine going on a date or having a relationship with somebody where you got 15 minutes with them once a month or every six months or three months, like you're not going to get a very deep relationship. It's going to stay on the surface, right? Integrative and functional practitioners, holistic some, I mean, I feel like there's still a little bit surface because you typically will like go in for a service and like leave, like maybe you'll go in once a week for chiropractic or once a month for chiropractic or something like that, but you're not necessarily like sitting there for an hour talking, you know, but integrative and functional practitioners, some are still very quick, you know, quick appointments, especially the doctors, you know, that that's kind of what they're used to, but a lot of dietitians in the space, me included, we really get to know our clients very deeply. We work with them longer term. For me, like my minimum to work with me is six months because we really need to dig in. And like I was saying before, like you need to like see what works and see and you know, try something, see how somebody responds to it and adjust and pivot from there. And you can't do, you just can't do that whenever you're seeing somebody for 10 or 15 minutes once every three or four months, like you just can't. And so we're going to, you know, do a lot of testing, trialing, and then personalization along the pathway. Like every single one of my clients, like we all have a similar foundation of things they need to learn, but the way it plays out in their lives and how they apply it, every single one of my clients, it looks completely different. The supplements that they're on, the food that we're suggesting that they eat, like it's totally different. And so I think that that personalization piece, it's maybe a little bit unique to me and just the way I'm wired as well, where I really want excellent results for my people. And so I like spend a lot of time with my clients, even not personally face-to-face with them, just like working on their plan, but you get a lot higher touch service with an integrative and functional practitioner versus somebody that you're just seeing, you know, once a year for a checkup or every six months to check in and see how you're doing and see if you need to adjust medications. So that's a big difference between traditional integrative and functional and holistic. 
Let me know if you guys have any questions. Let me know if you think this is helpful. If you want to know more about this, if you have any other, like if this brought up additional questions for you, come follow me on Instagram, say hi, and we'll talk soon. Thank you so much for listening to the entire episode. I hope you are feeling inspired and empowered to take bold action towards your health goals. If you enjoy what you heard, don't forget to follow my show so you never miss a new episode. And it would mean the world to me if you left me a review so others knew what to expect from my show. Last, get in touch. Let me know what bold action you're taking. Let me know how you're inspired. Follow me on Instagram at B underscore healthy gut underscore dietitian. I've put a link in my show notes for you so you can simply click and follow. Come say hi. I respond to all my messages and I can't wait to get in touch.